Good. Yeah, welcome everybody to this uh, invited talk at the ICM in the logic section. My name is Ulrich Kohlenbach. I'm a professor of mathematics at Technical University of Darmstadt, and it's my great pleasure to introduce our speaker, Professor Keita Yokoyama from Tohoku University. Professor Yokoyama received his PhD in 2008 uh, with a thesis also from Tohoku University with a thesis um, supervised by Professor Kazuyuki Tanaka. And then he had many prestigious research positions in Berkeley, for instance, where he spent uh, the year 2015 to 16. And then many years he was a senior researcher at the JICE, the Japan Advanced Institute for Science and Technology. And since almost exactly one year ago, he took up a full professorship at Tuku and Tuku University at the mathematics department. Keita Yokoyama's work connects in striking and unexpected ways various different areas of logic, such as non-standard models of number theory, proof theory, computability theory, constructive reasoning. I only mention one line of his research in 2016. He spectacularly solved, together with Ludovic Pate, one of the most notorious and difficult problems in logic for the past 20 years, namely to determine the strength of Ramsey's theorem for pairs and two colors, which had resisted fierce attempts by many eminent logicians for many years. Then he had many further results on this topic together with co-authors just as uh, Tex Lehman from Berkeley or Lechte Kolod-Ciacic from uh, Warsaw. And so today he will also tell us about uh, something related to this. He will speak about reverse mathematics from multiple points of view. He has agreed to take a few questions in the end. So please, uh, if you have questions, you can type them in on Discord where uh, Professor Yokoyama can read them. If there is not time to address all of them, then he will be also available later to uh, address the questions. And now the floor is all yours, Keita, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, I would like to thank organizers and uh, well, structure and program committee members for giving me an opportunity to give a talk of my studies uh, in such a great occasion. Uh, so today I'd like to overview the field called Rivet Mathematics and talk about some, some of my studies in this field. Okay, I'll try to start. So, okay, so what is reverse mathematics? I would say uh, the origin of reverse mathematics would go back to Hilbert's program in 1920s, well, whose aim is that finding a, a good axiomatic system T for the entire math and then prove the consistency of that system by affinitistic methods. So roughly speaking, I would say the, uh, uh, they wanted to uh, uh, prove the consistency of the whole mathematics in a sense, in a finitistic way. But as you know, this is impossible by Gerda's incompleteness theorem. And then, okay, uh, on the other hand, uh, one may find uh, various types of axiomatic systems which is useful for, uh, to develop mathematics. So now the natural question arises: that what axioms are essentially required to prove each mathematical statement? So that's the idea of reverse mathematics, uh, well, which started by Harvey Friedman's theme, uh, saying that, okay, very often, if a mathematical theorem tau is proved from the right axiom, then, how is equivalent to that axiom over some weaker system in which itself is not provable. Meaning that, okay, one may say that the right axiom, if you find a right axiom, okay, you may say that that's essentially needed. That's essentially needed to prove that statement. So, okay, uh, using that idea, uh, one, can, one may classify mathematical theorems by comparing with axiomatic systems or axioms. And okay, for that purpose, we need to develop a rebuilt mathematics within a weak enough system, weak enough axiomatic system. And here we try to do, we would try to do that within the system called the second order arithmetic, which is an 
automatization of the natural number and a set of natural numbers. So, okay. And indeed, for that purpose, we often use so-called big five systems in a setting of second order arithmetic. Uh, and the, uh, the definition of these systems are like this. Well, and the first, first system is called RC0, which consists of a, uh, a statement saying that the natural number is a discrete order semi wind and then uh, induction for sigma one formula, meaning that, well, induction for essentially the existential formula, I would say, roughly speaking, and also a comprehension, I mean, set, set existence axiom for uh, computable sets in some sense. And then the second system is called WK0, uh, which consists of RC, the base system RC0 plus the weak Kenneth lemma. And we can lemma corresponds to the statement saying that the zero one close unit interval in on the line is covering compare. And the third system called ACA zero consists, consists of, which consists of the sigma one zero comprehension, which corresponds to the statement that the closed unit interval is actually sequentially compared. Well, I would say the covering compactness and sequential compactness is actually not equivalent in if, if the base is because the base is well, they are, they may be not equivalent if the base system is very weak. So, well, we can consider this as a different axiom. And the fourth system is called the uh, ATL zero, which corresponds to some transfinite methods. And the fifth system is called pi CA zero, uh, in which one can use some a bit more set solid construction. And well, but today, uh, well, don't worry too much about the uh, definitions of those systems. Actually, uh, we would just use these systems for classification. And so the idea is that, okay, well, uh, the I'll say zero is just a level one system. And in this system, we need to prove everything computably. And then in the level two system, WK0, level two is that the one can use covering compactness of close unit interval in the level three, one can use the sequential compactness and the level four means that you can, one can use some more transfinite methods and level five, some more. Well, well, let's say just level one to level five. And okay, the idea of Libet math, well, okay, we would try to know the strengths of mathematical theorems and actually by comparing with these systems. And it is known that a lot of mathematical theorems are actually classified into these five systems uh, by, by, comparing, uh, by comparing with these things. And well, those results, a lot of those results are found in the textbook uh, in Debat, of Debat Mathematics called the subsystems of second order arithmetic by Steve Simpson. Okay, uh, I've tried to. Uh, see how, uh, how mathematical terms are classified a bit more. So for example, uh, we would consider this example. Okay, so Banner has fixed point theorem for contraction mapping saying that, okay, uh, if uh, F is a contraction mapping on the, uh, well, closed unit cube, uh, then it has a fixed point. And actually, its fixed point is unique and can be computed in, in the following way. So let's start from just any point Z and then calculate F of Z, F of F of Z, and F of F of F of Z and so on. Then it's easy to check that the, this sequence converges and actually one can compute the limit point, compute the limit in a computable way. So in that sense, well, formalizing that idea, one may say that Banaha's fixed point theorem is provable in the base system RC0. So it is, I would say it is the level one theorem. On the other hand, if we consider uh, Brouwer's fixed point theorem, saying that well, just any continuous function on uh, closed unit cube has a fixed point, then, well, it's known that no computable way to find a fixed point now. But on the other hand, uh, high nebulous compactness, I mean, covering compactness of the unit cube uh, supports the existence of a fixed point now. And well, formalizing that idea, one may say that, well, Brouwer's fixed point theorem is actually equivalent to 
we change lemma WK0 over level one system. And so it is it can be classified to level two. And if we consider more complicated version of fixed point theorem called Kalisti Kurtz fixed point theorem, uh, but this is now a, a fixed point theorem on complete metric space. So let's say XD is a complete metric space and C is a so-called potential function, which is lower semi-continuous. And then consider just a maybe non-continuous function F on X. But such that, well, this condition holds. This means that, okay, the distance between X and F of X it's small, it's always smaller than the difference of potential on X and F of X. So roughly speaking, well, intuitively, if you apply F, then you would lose some potential. And well, that must be uh, compatible in, in, in this sense. And okay, in this situation, uh, thanks to the potential, F always has a fixed point. And actually the fixed point can be obtained in this way. Okay, well, as same as the Banahas fixed point term, starting from any point and apply F many times. But now, since F may be not continuous, uh, well, just repeat it, repeating this process omega many times is not enough. And we need to repeat this process more, more than that. But still, since there's no omega one length decreasing sequence of real line, well, if you repeat this process omega one many times, then it must reach the fixed point. Okay, and then, well, in the sense of Liebert mathematics, one may verify that in some sense, this transfinite computation is essentially needed to prove the, to prove the Kirsty Kurtz fixed point theorem. And in that sense, well, Kirsty Kurtz fixed point theorem is above level four. Okay, so here are more examples of uh, classification. And for example, so these, all of these things are provable within the level one system RCA0, like the Anahas fixed point theorem. And okay, so these all of these things are uh, proved computably in a sense, so they are level one. That's the idea. And here are the list of theorems in level two. So now I would say they essentially use the high nebular compactness or covering compactness to prove them, like Broward's fixed point theorem or Cosi Piano's theorem for ordinary differential equations, or like the Jordan curve theorem. Well, they live in level two. And then uh, here are the things in level three, uh, which essentially requires sequential compactness. Uh, and for example, algebra squared theorem, or like the Lima mapping theorem. Uh, to prove this sense, well, sequential compactness of the closed unit interval is essential and it is enough. So they are classified to the level three systems. Well, if we consider level four and five, actually, well, small number of theorems are classified to theorem, uh, level four, level five. Uh, but for level four, uh, as I mentioned, like the Kalistic fixed point theorem, if we consider Kalistic fixed point theorem, then, well, even for just bare transform functions, it already at least above level four. Well, we don't know, we still don't know whether it lives in the level four or not, but well, it's above level four. And if you want to deal with Borel sets or Borel functions and so on, usually the level, usually the system level four is needed. And for example, the statement saying that any analytic and co-analytic co set is Borel, uh, that statement is equivalent to the level four system. And for the level five system, well, more like solid situation, uh, we need level five, I would say. And for example, the Cantor Van Dixon theorem for closed set, saying that okay, uh, any closed set, uh, closed set on uh, Euclidean space, well, can be 
divided into a countable set and a perfect set. Okay. Um, actually, I thought for a long time that these level four, level five systems are mostly needed for like abstract or more set theoretic settings and uh, kind of a uh, concrete math in the sense that working with an Euclidean space or so on uh, won't require these things. But actually recently uh, we find a counter example to that intuition and that's ekran variational principle. So ekran variational principle is often used in the uh, optimization problems or a study in PDE. And the statement is like this. So let's, let's say uh, the HD is a complete metric space and F is just the uh, positive function. And then uh, X is a point X, it set the should minimum or critical point if it satisfies this condition. Well, this is almost saying that if, if you forget this part, if you forget this distance, then it's just a minimum. So it's almost minimum up to some uh, the difference of this uh, distance. So that's the idea of shoot minimum. And then Ekran Selem sets that, okay, on complete metric space, any positive lower semi-continuous function has a shoot minimum. And that statement, well, maybe sounds con concrete analysis statement, it's equivalent to the level five system pi on one CSO. And even more, if you just restrict Ekran Selem to the to a fixed complete metric space, the space of continuous function on closed unit interval, it is still equivalent to pi on CSO, meaning that the level five system is essentially needed just to apply uh, the exist, just, just to take the shoot minimum on, uh, this, on this function space. So uh, I still don't know, but Perhaps there's a more concrete problem which requires level five system in like optimization problem or like in the study of PDE, but I don't know. Well, okay, on the other hand, if you try to classify more mathematical theorems, of course, you can also find a lot of exceptions. Exceptions mean now means that uh, the theorems not equivalent to the previous big five stands, level one to level five. So here are the here are such examples like Ramsey cell for pairs, or like Lehman integrability of bounded continuous functions, or Hilbert basis theorem, or uh, monotone convergence cell for weight integral. Or like Kruskal theorem or graph minor theorem, they, they are theorems in graph theory. And actually more and more, more theorems are known to be uh, independent from B5. And indeed, so many independent combinatorial principles are found below the level three. And the situation is like this. So this is uh, called the picture of Libert Math Zoo, and you may find this uh, in uh, this web page uh, by Damir Jafrov. And I, I've heard from I heard from him that, that this picture is drawn by his mother. And uh, well, and the real situation is this. So that well, the previous picture is uh, uh, well, the picture of this diagram. So. It describes actually, maybe we would see this, uh, the uh, relation between uh, many mathematical theorems. And here it is the level three system. And all of these things are equivalent to the level three system. And then there are many other independent statements below level three and the relation is like this. So this is strictly stronger than this one. This is strictly stronger than this one and so on. 
and the level one system is here. So between level three and level one, there are so many uh, interesting system, interesting mathematical statements. Okay, so that's the that's the current situation in the study of reverse mail. So okay, so here what we have seen are distance, like many theorems. Well, let's say in undergraduate math, are uh, often classified into the first three levels, like uh, Alzheimer Scholes theorem or Brouwer switch point theorem, and so on. The uh, well, classified into big five systems, and it's typically uh, the first three levels. On the other hand, there are also so many exceptions, and typically various types of combinatorial principles provide independent statements. But in that situation, I would say maybe uh, those can be considered as new axioms for classification. But on the other hand, well, okay, there are too many independent statements. So maybe we need some better way to calibrate uh, the strengths of those thing, those axioms. Because, okay, they are not linearly ordered already. So, well, we can say that this and this is different, but uh, to say more about their strengths, we need some extra way. And hopefully uh, we want some multi-dimensional measures uh, to, to calibrate all, all of the, those axioms. So from that idea, well, in the recent study of Leverth mathematics, uh, several different viewpoints are used to classify mathematical cells. Okay, so here are those uh, viewpoints. So the, uh, the first one is, well, computability, selective strengths are uh, well, essentially the same as the level one to level five introduced before. So the idea is, okay, uh, measure the strengths of mathematical state statement by comparing with set solidic, uh, set existence axiom of, of this form. And then, uh, well, the difficulty can be measured by the complexity of a formula appear here. And the second idea is called the proof theoretic strengths, well, corresponds to the consistency strengths of ordinal analysis, the study of ordinal analysis. And the idea is, okay, measure the strengths by, a, uh, by uh, well, capturing the first row, of capturing the growth rate of a function provided by this situation. So if something it's provable from the axiom, uh, some, some, some kind of statement saying that for any natural number x, there's some natural number y such that theta x, y, it's provable from an axiom, then want to find a bound for this type of statement saying that for any x, well, uh, how much, how big y is needed uh, to satisfy theta. And, and then, okay, uh, calculate the growth rate of the, to bound this kind of statement and use that growth rate to calibrate the strengths of the axiom. That's the, that's the idea of proof theoretic strengths. And the third one is called constructivity or strengths of uh, non-constructive principles sometimes. And that type of study is known as constructive reverse mathematics or the study of wire degrees and so on there. But today, sorry, I don't, I, I don't talk about this much because, well, this requires some different framework uh, and uh, I can't introduce those things today. But big idea is the following. So that to prove some mathematical statement, well, to especially for the existential statement, then we often uh, prove prove the existence of something by this way. So if, for any x, well, assume that for any x, not phi x holds and reaches the contradiction, that means that there must something satisfying phi. And 
that way of proving by contradiction, uh, use some so-called non-constructive principles. Uh, because, okay, well, that, in that way, one can't know the information about the ads, how information about how to construct ads. And then, okay, so if you use the principle of this form, then measure the complexity of phi, then one can, one can say that this is stronger and this is weaker in the sense of constructivity. And well, okay, using the first idea, well, as we have seen, Banaha, we may say that Banaha's fixed point theorem is weaker than Brauer's fixed point theorem. And using the second, second viewpoint, then we may say that, for example, the fundamental theorem, uh, theorem of algebra is strictly weaker than the Hilbert basis theorem. And the graph minor theorem is much and much stronger than Hilbert basis theorem, for example. And from the third viewpoint, one may distinguish the situation for, uh, one may be distinguish the strengths between intermediate value theorem and the maximum value theorem, maximum value principle on closed unit interval. Okay, uh, here I will try to focus on the Pruseltic strengths a bit more. So uh, I said that well, one would, we would try to calibrate the strengths of axiom by uh, knowing the bounding function for uh, statement on natural numbers. And then uh, for that, we would consider this kind of uh, hierarchy of functions on natural numbers. For the level, f of zero, level zero function is just the uh, successor function, f of f zero of x is x plus one. And then we would construct a faster growing function by this way. So f of m plus one x is, well actually uh, applying f of n x many times to x. So it, so for example, F3 of X is F2 of F2 of F2 of F2 of, well, repeat up X many times of X. So meaning that, okay, F0 is X plus one, F1 is two times X, X2 is well, something close to exponential function and F3 is something close to tower function and so on. And uh, if you reach the limit level, I, I mean limit ordinal, you take the diagonalization of the things constructed previously. So like f omega x is f, f x of x. And one can repeat this process more. More like f sub omega plus one, f omega plus two and so on. And if you consider this type of, well, fast growing functions with uh, ordinals, then, well, we would say that uh, they have a very strong connection uh, in, the sense, in the sense like this. So if uh, this type of uh, natural number statement for any x, that y, theta, x, y, it's bounded by some alpha fast growing function. Well, that situation is very close to the situation that, well, the same statement is actually provable from some reasonable base system plus the well orderedness of omega to uh, omega to alpha, the ordinal omega to alpha is well founded, well, well ordered, of course, it's ordinal. But if you consider that statement as an axiom, then this is sufficient to prove this statement. And in this kind of idea, actually, the hierarchy of the first drawing function and the hierarchy of the well orderedness axiom the form with orderedness of alpha and a consistency statement and the strength of induction or perhaps transfinite induction. They have a uh, very strong connection. And so the proof theoretic strength of an axiom can be considered as a uh, Kuiperian, this kind of strength. Okay. So with these viewpoints, well, we may say more for the previous independent statements from big five. 
So for example, the Riemann integral VT, Riemann integral VT of bound continuous function, that's fairly weak statement, but, uh, but it was independent from any of big five system. But we may say that actually the computability of theoretic strength is below level two, while the proof theoretic strength is fairly weak. Well, actually the weak as the level one system, I would say. On the other hand, the Hubert basis system, well, now the computability theoretic strength is trivially weak, while the proof theoretic strength is stronger than this. So, um, and indeed it implies the consistency of the level one system. So in that sense, okay, this has a stronger computability strength than Hilbert's basis theorem, but this has a stronger prosthetic strength than Riemann integrability of continuous functions and so on. So one can say the difference in that way. And um, for example, the monotone convergence theorem for Lubitsch integral is actually has the independent computability so it strength with level two. And the proof theoretic strength is weak, but actually plus means still implies some non-trivial induction. And then Pluska's three theorem or graph minor theorem, the, the, those theorems in graph theory have no computability theoretic strength, but actually very strong proof theoretic strength. So the Kruska theorem proved the consistency of the level for, for system, so it's proof theoretic strength. It's strong, I, I can say. And the graph minor theorem actually proved the consistency of the level five system. And so it's true set of strengths is very, very strong. And from that viewpoint, knowing the strengths of Lamsey self for pairs was a kind of a uh, long question, well studied questions in the field of reverse mass. So I've tried to focus on the Lamsey cell form from now on. Okay, so here's the statement of Ramsey's theorem. Actually, we focus on the infinite Ramsey's theorem for pair theorem for pairs, meaning theorem for pairs mean uh, pairs means the for graphs. So the statement is just like this for consider V V as a set of vertices, infinite set of vertices, and then okay, uh, if P is a coloring function from all edges. From B, from B to K. So here we consider complete graphs. So the edge means just that unordered pair from B. Then there exists an infinite set H, meaning an infinite complete subgraph, which has just single color. So that's the well-known infinite Lambda theorem. And the strength of this infinite Lambda theorem, uh, it's well studied in the in the field of reverse mass, and especially the computability theoretic strength is uh, studied so deeply. And now it, it is known that it doesn't always have a computable solution, but always has a solution with lower complexity in many sense. And uh, many of these, these results related to this are found in the uh, textbook by Dennis Hersfeld, Dennis Hirschfeld and the construct, constructivity from the viewpoint of constructivity. Well, it is known that, uh, well, the Lambda self, infinite Lambda theorem requires fairly strong excluded middle. And the uh, Caliparian, the exact proof theoretic strength of infinite Lambda theorem was a open question for a long time. For a long time. But well, recently we've we can solve it, and the result is here. So the proof theoretic strength of the uh, infinite number theorem for pairs and for two colors is actually characterized by a uh, first omega level, I mean fast growing function, which corresponds to the family of all primitive recursive functions. And if you consider more colors then it can be characterized by a this level of fast growing function. Essentially, this is just the next level of this. So the next level of primitive recursive functions, I would say. And indeed, okay, this result 
have some impact uh, with this observation. So the infinite lambda theorem is a meaningful action for infinity, which doesn't change the proselytic strength if, if we consider just two colors. So that can be considered as a partial realization of Huber's program in a sense. Well, uh, I can't uh, talk about that much that here, but that type of discussions appear in this article in Quanta Magazine in 2016. And also uh, it has some applications to theoretical computer science, typically for like determination analysis. Love, the very, very vague idea is that if the termination of a program is verified by a infinite Ramsey theorem, then the termination time should be bounded by a a corresponding fast drawing function. That's the idea. And the idea of the proof of, oh, sorry. Idea of the proof of uh, this theorem is also interesting in some sense, uh, namely that the connecting the structure with infinite Ramsey's theorem and the structure with finite Ramsey's theorem. Well, actually it is uh, kind of a, uh, old idea by uh, Jeff Paris called indicator argument. So here a, a very vague sketch of the idea. So here we would consider so-called finite Ramsey's uh, variants of finite Ramsey's theorem, so-called the iterated Pythagorean principle, saying that okay, for given any number a, there's some large enough b such that the set between A and B is M-dense. And the M-dense means that, okay, if you apply Ramsey itself for pairs once, then you may find a solution monochromatic set for this coloring, which is M minus one dense. And, uh, and also uh, the set is big in this sense, the kinetic of H is bigger than minimum H. So meaning that the, uh, Iterated Price Harrington for M means that OJ1 okay, can apply Ramsey's theorem, theorem for pairs M many times. Well, the point here is that this is just a first order statement, just a statement about the natural number. And now if we consider a no standard model M for, not, for the first order arithmetic, satisfying this iterated Price Harrington principle for each standard M, then, well, let's say this is M, then one may find a cut I such that, well, cut its structure satisfies infinite Ramsey's theorem. Well, here like this. So if you cut this type of structure, then, okay, originally the solution for each weighted price Harrington is just a finite set. But if you cut off some initial segment and then in there, well, we may use infinite struct, infinite set as well. And that satisfies infinite Ramsey's theorem actually. I mean, I mean, one can, if you construct I in a very clever way, then one may, one may say that this satisfies infinite Ramsey's theorem even. And this idea uh, connect finite Ramsey's theorem and infinite Ramsey's theorem. And since this is a uh, finite Ramsey's theorem, uh, well, it can be captured by a fast growing, some fast growing function. Well, one may know the proof of the trends of infinite Ramsey's theorem in this way. And indeed, indicator argument itself provides also the correctness statement uh, in a sense, uh, for example, the, for any M iterated pi Harrington for M holds implies that any pi zero two, I mean two two quantifier numbers are the consequences of infinite Ramsey theorem is true. So with this idea, one can actually connect the hierarchy of fast flowing function and the well orderedness statement, and like hierarchy of this type of finite Ramsey's statement 
And the hierarchy of correctness in this sense. Correctness is actually a generalization of a consistency statement. So you may consider it as a generalized hierarchy of generalized consistency. So the discussion about these things, I wrote the article for ICM proceedings. So if you're interested in, please see it. And if you consider uh, Ramsey itself theorem for triples and more, meaning that Ramsey itself for like hypergraphs and so on, it is known that it forms a strict hierarchy and like this. So RT1, 2, RT1, RT2, 2, RT2, RT3, 2. So this is a Ramsey cell for hypergraph triples. And this is a Ramsey cell for graph, Ramsey cell for graph. And this is a Ramsey cell, Ramsey cell for singleton means a, just a pigeonhole principle. And this is a strict hierarchy, but with the previous three different viewpoints, then one may say that, okay, so from the computability theoretic strength, the first two things are equal and the second two things are equal, but the third one is stronger. While the, if you focus on the proof theoretic strength, uh, the first three things are equal and then get stronger, stronger situation in the fourth, fourth statement and the fifth st statement is strictly stronger than that and so on. And, uh, and some, similar idea from the viewpoint of constructivity. Well, actually it depends on the formalization. So I won't say much about it, but yeah. So uh, if you using, the, using these three types of viewpoints, uh, one may uh, know the strengths of Ramsey's theorem in a, in a very good way. I mean, the, uh, one may say the difference in a better way. Okay, now uh, for, I'll try to talk for the future work a bit. So they, well, my general motivation for the study of liberal math is, is seeking for a better way to calibrate or classify or understand mathematical theorems. And difficult questions in my mind. So these things like, can we find more useful actions for combinatorics So like, how the different types of measures are related or can we consider some new type, new other types of measures and so on. And well, for the first question, uh, I'm and many, many people I've heard working like Heinemann theorem, Coward theorem, so on, they, they uh, uh, hot topic, I would say, I, I feel. And the, uh, the, for the second situation, we recently see that some failure of induction may restrict computability and those type of results. For the third thing, one, <clears throat> one interesting topic I feel is that the study of the length of proofs. And well, here, well, sorry, I don't, much time to talk about these things, but like for the length of proof minute. can be used for the uh, new act, well, new way to calibrate the strength of axiom in a sense. Well, uh, because, okay, a new axiom may or may not shorten proofs. Well, okay, the just consider length of proof of a single proof. Well, it's just a constant and hard to calculate hard to analyze, but if we consider the length of proof in this way, well, we can use it for the, for the new measure. And several other interesting topics are now developing by various people, I would say. And perhaps the ultimate question is this one. So the, well, more difficult math theorems require stronger axioms. And here difficult in, is just the difficult in the usual sense. So like they can we verify that the difficult math problems are difficult in the, in the sense of logic, that probably the ultimate question, but currently I don't have any good idea for this direction. So I will try to finish the talk with the, the final, with the, uh, 
one sentence quoted from the uh, Richard Schwartz survey, I urge you to come on in and join the fun for the Libras Mathematics. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, thank yeah. you, Keita, for your exciting talk, which covered a lot of ground. So I don't think we have enough time to dwell on questions, but uh, you will be available, I think, to answer any questions on Discord later. So many thanks again for this uh, beautiful talk and